New Yellowstone Eruption Data Understanding of Volcanic Hazards Last month, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory YVO, released its 2023 annual report with new insights into lava flow eruptions within the Yellowstone caldera. Results from dating lava flow eruptions between 160,000 and 70,000 years ago suggest that multiple lava flows may have occurred at the same time, challenging previous beliefs that lava flow activity was spread out over time. According to YVO, the notion of a dense cluster of lava flow eruptions is changing the way geologists think about lava flow events and volcanic hazards in Yellowstone National Park YNP. In an article written last year by Mark Stelton, a research geologist at the United States Geological Survey USGS, Stelton explained that the Yellowstone caldera formed about 631,000 years ago as a result of a giant eruption of rhyolite magma, or lava, that deposited ash across the U.S. This is one of three eruptions from the caldera over the past 2.1 million years. The reason visitors to YNP don't see a clear crater in the Yellowstone caldera is because of 28 smaller intracaldera rhyolite eruptions, meaning lava flows or lava domes from vents within the caldera structure. According to Stelton, the most recent phase of intracaldera rhyolite eruptions occurred 160,000 to 70,000 years ago. These 22 rhyolite eruptions are known as the Central Plateau Member Rhyolites, and are visible in YNP as plateaus often covered in lodgepole pines, as pictured above. New research published by YVO scientists in the Bulletin of Volcanology aims to determine more precisely the timing of Central Plateau Member lava eruptions, whether they occur in short-duration clusters or at irregular intervals, or both. The goal of the study is to better understand the frequency of rhyolite eruptions at Yellowstone and the volcanic hazards in the park. The study confirms that the 22 Central Plateau member eruptions occurred during five short episodes, in which two to nine lava flows erupted from the volcanic vents a few miles apart. YVO researchers estimate that each episode could last up to 400 years, but they could also be much shorter in duration. First, intracaldera eruptions are more dramatic events than previously thought, Stelton wrote. Rather than isolated events in which a single lava flow erupts, intracaldera eruptions appear to involve multiple eruptions occurring in different parts of the caldera at the same time. A second implication is that if the central plateau member rhyolite is represented by these five volcanic events, rather than 22, then the long-term eruption rate at YNP is much lower than currently thought. Eruptions may be less frequent, but they will be more dramatic when they do occur. If Yellowstone erupts again, it may not be as catastrophic but could be similar to the last lava flow 70,000 years ago. As a reminder, YVO says that Yellowstone is not overdue for an eruption. Most super-eruption events in a system are a one-off event, and while a second major eruption at YNP is possible, YVO says scientists are not convinced it will ever happen. There is currently only 5-15% to molten lava in the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone, which YVO says may not even be enough magma to trigger an eruption, the rest is lava that, while still hot, has solidified. To some extent, forecasting volcanic eruptions relies on knowing how often a particular volcano has erupted. As an analogy, let's say you live next to a baseball field, and you want to know when a baseball is going to be hit in your yard. One way to predict this is to calculate the average recurrence rate by dividing the number of baseballs in your yard by the length of the observation period, say, one year, to get the number of baseballs in your yard per year. This average recurrence rate can then be converted into the probability of a baseball being hit in your yard in the next day, week, or month.
Similarly, forecasting volcanic eruptions requires knowing how many eruptions have occurred over time. Geologists accomplish this by combining geologic mapping with geochronology to determine the history of volcanic eruptions. Knowing the average rate of volcanic eruptions is only the beginning. Geologists also need to understand whether volcanic eruptions are one-off events that occur in isolation from other eruptions, or whether they occur in clusters as part of a larger volcanic event. 